boy, I'm ready for a change in scenery. Swimming around this fish tank all day is pretty boring. Well, why don't you take a vacation? Get away for a while, see the world. Where would I go? How can I get out of this fish tank? The owners of this house are on their way to a diving vacation in Indonesia. Would you like to go along? Sure, but where is Indonesia? After a flight from Bali to Bima, we'll board the luxury liveaboard dive boat Chen Ho for a journey through the Banda Sea. First, we'll spend time around the islands of Komodo and Brinca to film the famous Komodo dragon, majestic Pacific manta rays, and the tiny pygmy seahorse. Flores is home to a world of colorful marine invertebrates, large schools of reef fish, and a very friendly octopus. Just north of Alor, local children will join us for a photo session while mandarin fish perform their nightly mating ritual. A trip to the Banda Sea would not be complete without a stop at Gunung Api, one of the few places in the world where divers can interact with hundreds of banded sea snakes. Our journey will end in Ambon. Wow! That looks like a fascinating trip. But how will I get all the way to Indonesia? It's on the other side of the world. I can't just swim there. This is the easy part. Just close your eyes and dream about beautiful coral reefs. I'll do the rest. This is really beautiful. I've never seen so many fish in one place. This is the biggest fish tank I have ever seen. Look at that school of little fish. I need to get closer to see what they are. Catfish. Cute little catfish. And they're yawning. This reef squid, measuring about 18 inches long, is very curious and comes close to our camera. Like octopus and cuttlefish, it is a member of the cephalopod family of mollusks. The eyes, found on either side of the head, each contain a hard lens, which moves in and out like the lens of a camera to focus, rather than changing shape like a human eye. In the mature male squid, one of the left tentacles develops into a reproductive organ which is used during mating to deposit sperm into the female. Another member of the cephalopod family is the octopus, 
which has the most complex brain of all invertebrates. It learns to solve problems by trial and error and can solve similar problems repeatedly. If the octopus is disturbed, cells in the skin will be active in an attempt to blend in with the surroundings. Coloration also reflects mood, white for fear and red for anger. This long-legged octopus is the recently discovered mimic octopus. It has been seen changing shape to imitate a snake, a flounder, or even a lionfish. Under cover of darkness, this mature red octopus scours the sand looking for food. Nearby, a juvenile red octopus is also out hunting. But this tiny baby octopus is looking for a place to hide. The third member of this family is the cuttlefish, a very gentle animal. They too have striking W-shaped eyes, which provide binocular vision, like in humans. Cuttlefish have minute hairs along their head, which can detect low-frequency vibrations, which aid in finding prey. They also use their tentacles as a lure to attract small fish. That was absolutely fascinating. I didn't even know the word cephalopod before this trip. I can't wait to see more stuff. Look! There are the divers. I'm glad I can breathe underwater without those bulky tanks and regulators. It seems that everyone has a camera. I wonder what they are looking at. Nudibranchs, which are perhaps the most colorful of all the underwater creatures, are favorite subjects for the underwater photographer. The name means naked gills, which are exposed in most species. Having no eyes, they rely on their rhinophores to provide sensory information. Nudibranchs, which are members of the mollusk family, evolved from snails millions of years ago discarding the protection of the shell for more mobility. Most resort to the use of chemical warfare to ward off an enemy, secreting a toxin which is fatal in some species. The colorful appearance warns would-be predators that they are not a tasty meal. Although they are not proficient swimmers, Nudibranchs can propel themselves out of danger. Nudibranchs are very interesting critters, and they come in so many vivid colors. This is so much fun, but I need to get my camera. It's getting dark now. I can hardly see. Can I help shed a little light on the subject? You bet.
Our home for two weeks spent at sea was the Cheng Ho, a 150-foot luxury liveaboard dive boat based in Indonesia. Its three decks and 11 cabins provided plenty of room for the 15 divers that made up our group of avid underwater photographers. Tinkering with the underwater camera gear occupied most of the free time. These waters were once home to the Dutch traders who came to the Spice Islands in the 17th century, introducing the world to nutmeg. Today, they are home to a vast diversity of interesting marine animals that inhabit the coral reefs. And we're here to photograph them. I'm sure glad that the divers are back in the water. I can hardly wait to see what's next. Snakes? Sea snakes? Poisonous sea snakes? Welcome to Ganung Api. The name means Fire Island in Indonesian, and it is a very special place in the Banda Sea. It is inhabited by sea snakes. Lots of them. Hundreds or even thousands of them, and we are here to film them. Sea snakes need to breathe air and come up every 20 minutes or so to take a breath. They live on shore during the breeding season, laying their eggs on the sandy beach. The snakes seem kind of harmless, but I'm not sure that playing with them is such a good idea. The hawksbill turtle is named for the beak-like shape of its mouth. This is an endangered species, with commercial exploitation responsible for the decline in their population. There is a continuing demand for shells, leather, and oil, which is used in perfume and cosmetic products. This stocky frogfish is out for an afternoon stroll. Having no swim bladder, it rarely swims, preferring to walk along the seafloor using its modified pectoral fins. Coming in a variety of sizes and colors, frogfish have a built-in fishing rod used to lure prey to their waiting mouths. It looks like the little ones are ganging up on the big one.
The stonefish is another silent predator, but I guess this afternoon is a bit boring. At the dive site called Manta Alley, about a dozen of these graceful rays came over to check us out. A cousin of the shark, the manta ray has no bones, only cartilage, and can reach a wingspan of more than 20 feet. They eat only plankton, using their large cephalic fins to guide food into their mouths. This underwater vent reminds us that Indonesia is a land of volcanoes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. That was fun. I seem to be lost again. I wonder where the divers are this time. You have mail. These small critters are really neat, but I'm having trouble seeing them. Now that's cool.
At just one half inch in length, the pygmy seahorse is one of the most difficult fish to photograph. During mating, the female will deposit mature eggs into the male's brooding pouch, where he fertilizes and incubates the eggs until they hatch. A close relative of the seahorse is the pipefish. Instead of fishy scales, pipefish and seahorses have bony plates just beneath their skin. Besides providing protection, these plates make the body rigid, causing them to swim by fanning their delicate fins at high speed, much like a hummingbird. The villages of Pura, just north of Alor, look forward to our visit as a chance to sell their handicrafts. And the children come over to check out the boat prior to our next dive, where they will meet us in the water to show off their diving skills. These baskets line the reefs near the village, an eco-friendly, if not very efficient, fishing technique. The Komodo dragon, the largest in the world, can reach a length of 10 feet and can consume up to 80% of its body weight in one feeding. This long-lived monitor lizard hunts by smell, licking its forked tongue to taste the air. If it does not kill its prey instantly, the deadly bacteria in its mouth will finish the job in a few days. Great photographers will do anything for the perfect shot. photographer is pretty brave. I'm glad I'm under the water and not on the beach. Hello. Hi. Are you ready to go home now? I guess so. But this place is hard to leave. I know. But the divers are heading home. And it's time to get back to California. Okay. Boy, that was a great trip. I sure hope I get to go on more adventures. Of course you will. Mm -hmm.